Today I'm talking about encouraging yourself in the Lord. So stay tuned at the end of today's teaching because we have a free digital download offer for you. Today on the subject of encouraging yourself in the Lord, and of course the example that we have is David's example out of the Old Testament, and I'm going to encourage you that even as I'm sharing this with you today, that your ability to encourage yourself is very, very beneficial for you. You know, there's so many people I've ministered to that at different times I've had people um, say this to me, that, you know, it's like, man, I've got no one to encourage me. It's like I'm on my own all the time, and they're constantly reaching out for someone else to do something for them. And those kind of people constantly live with their issues because I believe it's very, very beneficial, of course, for our heart to connect to Jesus, have a personal relationship where we're not constantly dependent on someone else to do something for us, but we experience the help of the Lord for ourselves. We have an ex- uh, the Holy Spirit on the inside who, who is our teacher, who will help us lead, direct, and guide us into all truth and open up the Word of God to us in a way that will transform and change us. And that is very, very beneficial for us. But at the example I'm beginning with here in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 8, is, the, of course, the example where David came back to where he lived there at Ziglag and with his men. And it says that the Amaleks had invaded, and what had taken place was that they had captured not only the city that took captive uh, the women uh, that was with David, uh, both their wives, their children, uh, all of their things from great to small. And it says they didn't kill everyone, but they took them away with them, took them captive. And David, it says in verse 3, and his men of the city, when they found this, of course, that their sons and daughters were taken captive and all the city had been burnt, that, you know, the response we find in verse 4 is this, that David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept, and they had no more power to weep. Now, this is their initial response to the circumstances of what they had gone through and what had taken place was they began to consume their heart with the issues of the problem of what just took place. And it says that um, David's two wives here, and it says that, um, they, of course, had been taken captive. But in verse 6, says, David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David, it says, did this. It says he strengthened himself in the the Lord. The King James, of course, uses the word encouragement. To encourage yourself has a strength and an ability because it's in the Lord. And when your focus is off of your circumstances, off of your problems, off of yourself, and you're looking at Jesus, you're looking at truth of God's word as an example found in Christ Jesus, truth that belongs to you because of all the promises of God, 2 Corinthians one twenty, for all the promises of God in him are yes, in him Amen. Every single one of the promises of God belongs to us because Jesus paid the price to give them to us. And, you know, then it says this, after David encouraged himself, suddenly he had a whole different perspective on the circumstances. You know, David, in the, initially in the beginning, he wept right along with everyone else based on the circumstances. But instead, he called Abinor the priest, and he said it, to him, he said, bring the epod to David. So, so he did that, and David inquired of the Lord, the scripture says, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the answer that came from the Lord was this, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, you will recover all. Now, that is an encouraging word. You see, there's so many Christians that don't take the time. They don't focus on Jesus. Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred make up the heart sick. When you consume your heart with the issue, then it becomes sick because you consume yourself with the problem to the point that you become the problem. You know, Proverbs 17, 22 says it this way, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You see, in other words, one translation says, a happy heart is a good medicine and a cheerful mind works healing. That's why the scripture says that a cheerful heart is like a medicine because it works healing. 
When you get your focus off of yourself, there's the saving of the soul. In other words, you're changing inwardly on the inside. The soul has to do with the mind, the will, the emotions. When you begin to get your thoughts off yourself in relationship to the problem, you begin by choice of your will to focus on Jesus instead of focusing on yourself in relationship to the problem. That has a, debt, uh, a very beneficial effect for your, for your soul because suddenly your emotions, their be- encouragement begins to come. You begin to feel different, feel better on the inside. I tell you, you consume your heart with a problem, you become the problem to the point that all you can see is the worst. Then you want someone to do something for you, but your heart's not prepared to receive from the Lord. David did something very, very beneficial as he encouraged and strengthened his heart in the Lord. It gave him the willingness and his heart opened up to Jesus to hear good. Boy, I tell you, if you don't hear good, you don't identify with good, then the problem is this. Even if God speaks good to you, you'll have trouble listening because you'll come back with the bad. You'll come back to prove the bad you believe, the wrong judgments of the heart, the unbelief that is there. Proverbs 13, 15 says this, a glad heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of heart, the spirit's broken. In other words, a cheerful heart brings a smile to your face, one translation says. But you see, An encouraging word is what brings us up. The word of God, you need to meditate on the word until it becomes truth and reality, and you need the help of the Holy Spirit, and it's beneficial for you to begin that process by taking your focus off of yourself and begin to look to Jesus and the reality of the price he paid, how terrible a price it was he paid to give us all of the promises that belong to us. I tell you, just taking our eyes off of ourselves can help us to have God's perspective so we lose a human perspective. I want to encourage you to stay tuned today because we have a free digital download offer for you. For those that are being blessed by the content of this message, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button.